Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Alejandro Ida about season three of Narcos Mexico dropping on Netflix November 5th. Welcome back to the show, sir. It's good to see you. Thank you, my friend, my dear amigo. Peter, yeah. aka Pedro. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's good to see. We we it feels like we did the I interview guess. last year, but it feels like forever. Yes, we were in. I was in. We were in the middle of COVID. Yeah, remember? we were, and I feel Two like months, yeah. that just feels like forever ago. And I don't want to go yeah. back to those days. Um, it's an exciting time in every season. Um, a lot of people are wondering how the El Chapo storyline is going to kind of continue. There's a lot of questions around it. What's it be? What's it like for you now, calm before the storm? It's about to be out there, you know, waiting for everyone to see what happens with El Chapo's storyline. Yes, I mean, definitely I'm excited. It's okay. been a long wait, not only for us, but also, you know, especially the fans. You know, yep. The audience have been waiting for this season to be out. And it's finally one week away after a long, rough year. And, you know, like I said, uh, I'm also waiting. The fact that we halted this production in March due to COVID, of, of yeah. course, and then had to resume probably, I think it was seven to eight months later. Yeah. That's a long time. And, yeah. and you know, especially to, I mean, I, I haven't seen the, the series or the season. So I don't know if, you know, if, <laughs> if you're going to see the difference between you know, the seven months prior, you know, some actors came probably with, you know, different physiques, some skinnier, some, some, you know, <laughs> ate more during the pandemic, uh, short hair, long hair, mustaches, you know, it, it was hard, I guess, for everybody to just keep the continuity and, you know, I close know. to all the departments. And, and then for us, you know, kind of like get back in your psych acting, uh, you know, mentality of, of just embracing again, the characters and, you know, for me, it's a little harder. I do change a lot. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you, you, you're not, uh, you know, you're not rehearsing or you're not prepping for that long time that sometimes the, act, the, the character tends to go away. Oh, yeah. You, know, you, you got to go and find him and bring him back. Did we talk about that last time about like the hair and makeup, like how long you're in the chair for? Because obviously, you know, people are going to watch this interview and they're going to think, oh, it's El Chapo. Like, they might not recognize you at all, right? <laughs> totally. And it's, it's something in, in general... Even before uh, Narcos Mexico, I, I like to have a little of a chameleonic look to my, mm -hmm. my, my characters. And, uh, you know, I never get recognized publicly, which is also very free. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be a normal person. And then, you know, have my, 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 my artistic, uh, you know, world. So, yeah, there was many, many hours in the, in the makeup and chair. It, even in the first season, the first season was even harder because we had to establish the look. Yeah. And, and you know how to transform this guy to look into that guy and then towards that we were just kind of playing with the whole you know historic pictures of how did how does it or joaquin well or the chapel look so that was easier but it was a long time especially you know um the wig the makeup and everything anyways is it weird sometimes you talked about you know season one run season three right now is it kind of like what's it like season after season because it's one thing going in and shooting the show and everything but like i'm just curious about like preparing like before like reading the scripts talking to the showrunners and everything i'm curious what's that like for you season by season because yes you're playing the same character each season but the landscape is going to be completely different every season. More characters come in, a lot more troubles, a lot more issues for your character surrounding a lot of people around your character. What's that like season to season, like before you go and shoot it, Alejandro? I'm curious about that. Cool question. And I think it, it varies for everyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got to be honest. So in, <laughs> in, the in the beginning, like in season one, you know, I, I guess... I talk barely with people. Yeah. You know, the, the, direct, <laughs> the directors didn't, you know, didn't, I don't want to say care. I just, I just say like, you know, I was not the lead. I was not Diego Luna or, or, or you know. Uh, so in the beginning, they really talked to me very little. 
And yeah. then, you know, second year, um, they talked a little more. And thankfully, this third year, uh, Carlo, which happened to be our new showrunner, but always he was the creator of the show, Carlo mm -hmm. Bernat, he was really close to me. And I felt good. I felt um, not, not good like in a special way. I just felt that my work was, had, you know, but it mattered. I was just not, you know, right there in the corner, just, okay, call Alejandro and action. So in this case, I think in this last year, Carlo brought me in more. He shared his ideas. Yep. We talked about um, things that we both wanted to portray or, or that we were inspired by other, other stories. And, uh, and that was cool. You know, I've, it was cool to work with hand on hand with the, with the showrunner. And I guess that led me a little bit more of um, confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. So I also went and, and, and embraced that uh, free, well, you know, the, the freedom that, that Carlo gave me within, you know, the conversation we had. So it made me even, you know, because he was two years already on, in my back, I kind of have the confidence to, to approach the sets differently. You know, I, I, I felt, I felt better. I felt like this was my place. So yeah. I will, I will talk more to the new directors and, and, you know, we had a better understanding of what, would, what I wanted to do. I was also a very good ambassador of all the new actors coming in. Like I always <laughs> embrace them. You know, I was like, Hey man, welcome, welcome. And, and you know, uh, don't be nervous. This is a great team and we're all here to support each I'm other. I'm playing El Chapo on screen. Yeah, I'm man, Alejandro yeah. Rivia. I'm the nice guy. So, so, exactly. That was my idea. You know, like, okay, so I'll, I'll be the boss next, next year. So I'll, I'll start prepping by being nice. <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately that never happened right so i'm, I'm a little bittersweet that we're not gonna have another season yeah. but hey man that's out of my control and you know did we i think we t we talked last time we spoke it just came out or it came out like two three months like two three weeks after like it was recent when when we spoke last time like it yes. was it was recent it's funny because you know i've interviewed you know hero and alberto you know, your boys from season two, the DA guys. A funny story I could talk about now. This is a spoiler for people if they haven't seen Narcos Mexico season two. But, you know, it ha it was a while ago, so you probably saw it. But I remember telling my friend <laughs> that I was interviewing them. And <laughs> it was like before I watched them because I, I, I ended up lining up the interviews of you guys. And then I, I had to time my schedule. And then I just binged it before I spoke to all you guys. And then before I started it, I told them, I'm like, I'm interviewing these two guys, Kiero Alberto, they're DA guys. And my friend's like, oh, they're great. Yeah, they die, though. I'm like, thanks, <laughs> man. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm like, I appreciate that. I appreciate the heads up. Um, interesting thing. You can even date this back to Narcos, like the, re the original Narcos with, you know. Columbia. The, yeah, the Columbia one. Um, the show just has such a good look and, and it's just the aesthetic yeah, is amazing so nice. yeah. the characters have like a swag do you know what i mean by that a little yeah, bit yeah, there's like yeah, a yeah, swag totally. to the show do you do you, like that's what i think stands out like it's a great stories and everything but like the swag do you know what i mean by the swag a little bit totally yeah. it, it's honest visually and if we talk about filmmaking terms yeah it's an amazing show yeah and and, and then, you know, you have this based on a true story, you know, uh, Bible, yeah. right? That, that all these stories are written, are there, they happen. And they're endless till yeah. today as we're, as we're speaking. Like even today, there's a hearing right now of El Chapo sentence right yeah. now going on two hours ago. So that's just nuts that we're still, this is present and it will keep happening, unfortunately, you know, because the war on drugs is not an easy subject to digest. And no, it's not. It's a horrendous thing. We're not glorifying whatsoever. We're informing in a way. Also, we're not making a documentary. So, of course, it's an entertainment. Yeah, it's a absolutely. TV show. It has that format. It is edited and it has music and it has actors portraying, you know, real life people or some not real. Yep. And the, gen the in general terms, the fact that they can pull that off to make such an amazing, beautiful, soir, sexy show, it's impressive. And, and it's really cool visually, the directors, the DPs, um, even, the, even the, you know, the, the locations, and that's all shot in Mexico. It's so rich in, in, in to the view of the audience. And, and I mean, that's why I kind of like, I tend not to watch what I do, pretty much. Yeah, we talked about that last time. That's I why- I don't watch my movies, so I yeah. don't watch my shows. 
but narcos has something i guess because i'm mexican and you know i i uh, i also yeah. have this is the first show that i've been involved for you know three four years of my life yeah. which is also something that i'm very you know my heart is in there yeah so I, i've watched it i've watched season one i watched season two and like you said, I'm uh, I'm immersed by the the visuals, by the filmmaking, by the the music. But I'm also talking like what like Scoot's character, Jose's character, just the way they're just set up, like the hair, and makeup, and just like the style, yeah, so like cool. just like all right, like yeah, it's so like, cool. yeah right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look at the look at Amado Carrillo, you know. Yeah, and and, and, then, <laughs> and then the Arellano brothers. And to be honest, you know, I mean, I don't want to get in trouble, but in real life, all these guys were ugly. <laughs> you know, and in, in the show, they're also cool and handsome and sexy. So it's just weird. But in real life, they you know they're you know, <laughs> That's funny. awesome. And, you know, we're not, like, before we wrap up quickly, I mean, Bad Bunny is going to be in season three as well. That's right. That's Which, right. Um, yeah. See, I'm I going to be honest. Like you said before, and we talked this before, I don't do interviews. I just <laughs> think that I'm very dumb and I sound horrible to make them. So. <laughs> I prefer to keep my mouth shut, but you're always been a great friend and a great sport. And I enjoy that you're, a, 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 you know, someone who started this from the bottom and you believe in your show. And that for me, it's, you know, I, I, I want to support that, you know, it, no, it, I really appreciate these that. kind of people and this kind of, uh, you know, you had a dream, you had a, something and you just knock doors. Yeah. And if I am able to open that door for you, Hands the name, dude. Here. I really, I really appreciate that. That that is awesome, and I wanted yeah, to thank man. you so much for coming on the show again to chat about season three. I really appreciate it, man. Absolutely, and thank you always for supporting my work yep. and for being there for all all, all your all the other talent. Yeah, and uh, you know, wish you all the best on your. I show wish you all well, the best as well. Audience. I mean, it's dropping pretty soon, November fifth. It's going to be on Netflix, so people are going to be able to see That's it, and right. people could follow you on Instagram, right, to keep up to date with yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. I. I I put, uh, you know, my work things there, and it's fun. It's fun. Uh, yeah, but Peter, you know, again, you know, thank you. Uh, so it was fun. You have a really cool voice. So, <laughs> I appreciate so, uh, it. Yeah, anytime. It's soothing to the ear. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Anytime. Well, this has been Popturative, youtube.com slash popturative for previous episodes. Until next time, that's Alejandro Idea and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popturative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.